Welcome to another episode of the Headlight Restoration Pro, where I'll be showing you how to turn jacked up headlights like this and make them into something a little bit more like this. Let's go. Picture perfect, better than a day rolled off the lot. I mean, look at it. Perfection. And also, wow, he's really using this. Check it out. The Headlight Restoration Pro. Perfect. My grandpa asked me one time if I care whether I live or die. Yeah, I do. You know, it's too late. No, you're not fucked up, Tops. Ah. No, no. <laughs> no, you're not fucked up. Let's get down to business. This is a 2016 Nissan Pathfinder. And uh, it's a good looking vehicle. It has a uh, classically elongated headlight. It's pretty large and it still has a considerable amount of clear coat on the sides and the bottom left over. Uh, which means I'm probably going to have to use a lot more uh, pads or whatever. I'm guessing about four to five P500s, maybe uh, two uh, P800s. But as you see there, uh, that's the backup kit that I had to go and get. Why? Because every couple of uh, days I go through my um, my boxes and my my bags and go through everything and restock them okay and take inventory uh, to see what I have to buy to see how much I've used to keep track of all the stuff and uh, you know know when I uh, you know how much money I'm spending on this and that or each vehicle or whatever uh, but primarily so I don't run out so I don't get a call like hey I have a uh, you know a car lot calls or something I need uh, six, 16 cars uh, done you know and you're like oh shit I don't have, you're going to have to wait. They're like, oh, I can't wait. I'm going to go with someone else. Yeah. Yeah. You'll feel like hanging yourself that day, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. Suicide's never okay, but I'm just saying it's a joke. Um, but yeah, so I always make sure that I have enough uh, in practice to do, uh, you know, an army of vehicles. If I start falling short, I make sure I place orders or whatnot. But uh, let's get into the importance of a backup bag. The backup bag comes in a place where... In this situation, I'm going crazy. I'm on scene. I'm like, damn it, where the hell are my P500s? I don't want to hit this light with anything um, heavier than a P500 because it is a medium hard light uh, with barely any clear coat left or mostly dead clear coat. So it would be way too aggressive even to step to a P320. It would just make my work harder to get done and uh, possible uh, scratching left over I'd have to keep working on until it was gone, okay? Um, so I didn't want to do that. I'd rather use four or five P500s or whatever I needed to use besides that. So um, uh, like I said, I pack all my stuff and I, I charge all my batteries and I do all that stuff, clean out my bags, make everything nice and pretty and have it ready to go in my trunk. Uh, but sometimes I um, forget something, okay? Sometimes I, I misplace something or I forget to put something in there. This time it was my bag of P500s and, uh, you know, my, my, my small bag of uh, P500, P800, and uh, the 3000 Trizac. So, um, nevertheless, I wasn't here on scene, and I'm probably about 20 miles away from my house. So I was like, God damn it, man, what am I going to do, right? And I'm like, ah, my backup kit. That's why I always keep a backup kit. A backup kit is so important because these days will happen. They've happened to me, and I've been miles away from my house or anywhere else. And I didn't have a backup kit, and that's when I started making one. And that backup kit is shown on this video here. It goes uh, to depth with what's in my trunk, and it actually has a little uh, segment of it that shows you what's in the backup kit. Um, you know, there's extra everything in the backup kit, everything except for tools. Um, and even there is some extra tools, like a screwdriver with different heads, and there's, um, you know, a, um, a first aid kit and all kind of stuff like that that you might need someday when shit hits the fan. But the most important thing in there to me is the backup kit because sometimes I'm doing something or I'm in a rush, I have so much stuff going on. Um, and you know, I, I, I don't fully pack my bag correctly or I make it last too long. Maybe it's been a week since I packed my bag, whatever, and I've been working all week. Uh, cause sometimes I have enough, I have enough equipment and carry around enough equipment and, uh, batteries, or whatever to do that where I've been working four or five days and I haven't redone my, uh, bags or whatever. And I, uh, you know, 
undershoot something and then you know i'm like damn i'm out of you know i'm out of these i ran out of these oh no i didn't because i have my backup kit and the thing with the backup kit i never tap into it to use for anything else um i i treat it like it's not there until i absolutely need it uh that way when you know when you do need it is there so if you don't have a backup kit, you're just uh, causing yourself some future issues because, uh, believe it or not, this is going to happen uh, if you're doing enough or whatnot. Uh, this more so applies to people that are going out doing um, a considerable amount of vehicles, whether you're running a business or you're just getting started or um, you're driving around doing cars all day. Um, this applies to those people. The DIY person that's just going to be doing their vehicle, their daughter's vehicle, shit like that. You really don't have to worry about it too much. But uh, somebody who is going to be doing volume is going to need to have a backup kit. All right? A backup box. Uh, well, you know, that's uh, very beneficial. But this light is um, somewhat of a difficult light. Not because... Um, it has crazy shapes or anything like that. It has a little bit of crazy shape up top where you'll see what I have to do to get that shortly. Um, but it's just really big, all right? It's really big and it's uh, set a little weird. Um, and you're going to have to use a lot of material if this uh, light isn't bare or naked. This is just to the point where um, pretty much mostly the clear coat has died except for those really white areas that were. And that was um, actually down to the um, actual polycarbonate. So I only had to use two P500s. Uh, which uh, sometimes, you, you know, when I guesstimate, um, things aren't always correct. And the reason why is because all discs aren't created equally and you're going to be seeing more about that uh coming up uh here in this video shortly all discs are not created equally sometimes i buy so many of these things i see so much sometimes um there'll be a batch where they're just really softly put together and then there'll be a batch where there's just hardcore the difference is is those little soft ones you know on this light would like take you know four or five of them you'd be like damn why did it take so many and then you'll pull uh, a disc out of another batch you'll know, be like damn that one disc just destroyed the whole light it took everything off you know why is it so much different uh it's just because uh, the consistency of making their discs are really high but even then they're still a little uh, uh different in consistency from time to time uh sometimes i have some that have little crinkles uh on the front or whatever kind of like a crease or something maybe from the manufacturing or the packing or whatever uh when you get those you want to discard those because if you use them you don't don't see it or whatever you don't use them correctly um you know it's just it's a whole lot of shit that can happen uh you can um i've used one before and didn't notice it and then like i have these swirls these big drawn out swirls all over the light gouged out and I'm like, what the fuck happened? And I went back to the discs I just used, and I looked at it and was like, oh my god, this shit has this crease in it. Uh, which just means that, like, you know, if you think about it, there's like a high point that's just very microscopically higher than the um, other uh, parts of the pad. But still, that can make a huge difference when you're talking about sanding and whatnot. And speaking of, I uh, brought that up too, because uh, right here, you're going to see this disc... Um, see that? I almost didn't catch it. That is, you can see how when they cut it out, uh, apparently when these come out, uh, they're big, huge uh, discs or big, big, huge sheets of paper, right? And uh, what they do is they cut them out, you know, kind of like a hole punch. And you see how that one was uh, mispunched or whatever, and it still made it inside of the bag. All the rest of it's good, but that little crease uh, where the punch lines are, is very coarse and if you use that on this headlight with a power drill you're going to be gouging shit out and doing something that you don't want to do and then you'd have to fix it so you really want to watch out for that and if you have a disc that has any kind of discrepancy it feels funny it looks funny or you know any kind of little creases or folds or whatever like that you want to not use it it's not worth it the name of the game is less cleanup you don't want to sit there and have to use you know hours of sanding to clean up a headlight okay um, these headlights took me about 35 minutes a piece um, because they're large and because the material or whatnot 
and I decided to use the, uh, the uh, lighter grit instead of moving up to the 320 uh, because, like I said, you don't want to cause more issues for you to clean up. Uh, I showed, uh, for the longest time, I didn't want to show people using the 320s and anything higher because inherently people want it the easiest way and sometimes that translates into laziness. Okay, they don't want to do the work. They don't want to. They don't want to spend the time and finesse. Uh, you know the stuff off. They just want to. You know, throw a stick of dynamite at it, whatever. And that's mainly why I don't show the one eighties because you know you guys start using that shit, you're gonna be pissed off. All right, you're not gonna understand why I can't fix this headlight or why I can't uh, get this headlight the way he does with this one eighty uh, because you know shit will start getting gouged out and it's almost uh, feels impossible to get. Uh, these scratches out of the headlight. Um, but a lot of people are going to be lazy and they're going to just like, I just used the 320 and I'd be seeing, hearing this in the bio about these guys who think they're experts now, right? They've done maybe 50 headlights and I know you feel like you're just, uh, you know, just the shit now, whatever, whatever. It's good. But I mean, you know, you have a lot to learn. <laughs> so they just jump to the 320 at the, you know, at the drop of a hat or they jump to the 220 at the drop of a hat when it's really not necessary. And the thing is, you're making your headlights not come out as good. And you're, you know, and if they are still coming out as good, you're, you're making your time all fucked up. All right, because when you're using certain things like that, the cleanup is much more advanced. When you're using something at the P500 uh, or P600 or, you know, 7A, whatever the hell, that way, you know, instead of the opposite way, the lighter ones, you're going to have a, a way easier time achieving that perfect finish, a way less time of cleanup, okay, uh, which all in all makes the time of the headlight restoration a hell of a lot less. Less time consuming, less back breaking, less stress, less, uh, you know, materials, less everything. So don't cheat yourself, treat yourself and do it the right way. You, you have to pick the right denomination for the right uh, headlight. Uh, starting point is a huge factor. Working on this headlight about uh, 45 minutes before the sun starts setting or whatever. So you'll see some things in the... Uh, in the end, where I'll show you how I do my a little bit of my nighttime procedures or whatever, I'll show you something about that that is uh, really eye-catching and something that you will be interested in at the end. Um, but anyway, see, you could still use, this one was cut in such a way that I could still use a little bit of it. Uh, as long as I pulled off that other piece, it should be fine. And just for a little hand work on the small area up here, where you really have to pay attention to because, uh, it has a big prominent lip right there. And you really got to hit that lip too, because if not, when you, uh, do your finished product and your finished, your finished sealing or whatever with a, a clear coat whatnot, you, uh, you know, you will seal in that spot. You won't even notice it, but when it's done, you'll see it. It'll be like a yellow bar across the top or whatever when the sun hits it or when the light hits it. So you have a super clean light with just this yellow bar on the top. So you really want to get uh, all over that and even behind it because the lip goes up about a centimeter over the light. Uh, not every light has this, but when they do, you have to make sure you treat that light accordingly. And the drill is not going to get that, so you have to do it by hand. All right, I just want to take a moment here and let you guys know there's over 140 videos now streaming on this channel. Real videos, not just some pissant shorts that like, here, do this, do that, and do this and that, right? Like that don't really show you shit. They don't show you what they use. They're like real top secret and shit. And they have some figment of their imagination type shit that they use, whatever. And they're taking labels off cans and they have shit that you never even heard about. Don't know where it comes from. Okay, I'm using 100% certified uh, uh, headlight materials and all that stuff that is uh, in the bio. You know, you can link in the bio. It's all uh, for purchase through Amazon. If not purchasing, if you just want to know information about it, you can go ahead and 
click those links and it'll give you all the information through the Amazon links okay just like you were uh, viewing Amazon or it, it pretty much is a link to Amazon okay so that's uh, a trusted partner um, you know when you start ordering stuff um, I always have every time I order some from eBay I always have some kind of issue about about four times out of five I have an issue there'll be something wrong or some kind of a dangle and the return policy is shit I'm just gonna let you know right there it's shit people it's just funny I don't like using that platform but Amazon I've never had a problem that they did not fix okay uh, they even bend over backwards I've had stuff where I forgot the return date and I called two months later like yeah I was out of town or something something blah 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 and they're like okay we're gonna do a courtesy for you and they still return shit Amazon has the best policy okay it's the safest place to do your shopping believe it or not it's even safer than walking in a, a freaking store and getting shit because it's just the best return policy you don't have to deal with anybody it comes to your door that's it um but I mess with Amazon. All my all of my stuff that you guys are seeing is 100% through Amazon. Uh, well, let's just say 98% through Amazon. Okay. Um, it's just the way I do stuff. And it's just, I mean, the quality of everything is high. And they are very stringent with their... Um, with their uh, merchants. And they have their own stuff that's very well put together business okay it's the probably the world's biggest business one of them um of course everybody knows that so you don't have to worry about uh where your shit is coming from or if i'm gonna get burnt okay so that's all the links i use in my bio is through amazon um and anyways like i said 140 channels uh excuse me, 140 videos on this channel Feel free to check them out. A lot of people ask questions, and I just route them to the videos because they'll be like, "Why is uh, you know why is uh, the headlights not made out of glass anymore?" I'm like, "Oh, here you go. There's a video like this one right here. There's videos on there that will answer your questions about headlight restoration and just headlight knowledge in general. Uh, this channel is chopped full of it. Uh, so feel free to look through things. You'll see the titles, and it pretty much the titles go with what." The content is uh, so go through those check out stuff you'll see uh, what you like I have a video um, videos on here that are extremely popular I have one that's about two million views in like two years uh, I have uh, other ones you know hundreds of thousands or whatever um, different ones about two years of videos so far um, and basically uh, what it all sums up to is that this method kicks ass and you're going to see it done so many different times with so many different vehicles that it's a hundred percent you can do this it's um, you know it's shown step by step and I give you the keys to the kingdom on what uh, to buy What's sidebar on that? what is this oh my god it's gonna use plastic X if you guys know my channel I have religiously said since the beginning, Plastic X is shit poo poo doo doo. It is not the shit you want to use, right? But this is why, check this out right here. Look at this. Okay, see this bottle right here? This is why I ordered a new bottle because they revised their, um, their formula. Okay, I bought the new bottle from Amazon. I contacted. Um, the seller or whatever and they said that um, this is how the bottles were and then they changed them back so when I contacted the, um, the seller through Amazon he told me that so I called uh, uh, or messaged I tried to call I always try to call them is is better I messaged um, McGuire's and what they sent me back is that yes uh, over the last couple of years we revised our uh, formula and that's what it says on this bottle because I asked him why did the bottle that I just ordered not say this but this bottle when I did order it on the screen uh, it says this for the picture and they said oh because that was a promotional thing to show people that the formula has changed now it just goes back to the regular um, the regular uh, uh, labeling or whatever but the product did change and this is the new product that you're working with so I said okay so I'm 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 definitely gonna make a video about this and I'm gonna use this and right now I can tell you it is considerably different 
Uh, the color is somewhat different. You see that blue hue. It's a lot different, a lot bluer, a lot uh, different feel. It's thicker, more clay feeling. Um, and it smells, believe it or not, it smells like Ajax, like the shit you use to clean toilets or whatever. I use it in my bathroom. And it's kind of crazy because it smells like Ajax and it's blue like Ajax, kind of. Um, and the texture is way more thicker, like clay-like. Um, it feels like there's more oil in it. One of the biggest things I had about um, the old Plastic X is there wasn't enough, nowhere near enough oil substance in it because uh, those oils are beneficial oils for these headlights um, for all polycarbonate headlights the oil um, does something with those headlights they penetrate into those pockets and they help the clarity as you see here on this light um, and another thing was it didn't have enough um, it only had cutting power didn't have enough um, a lot of things it missed on a lot of points like if I had to gauge it uh, compared um, you know to all the other things I approve uh, back in the day, before this formula, I would have gave it like a two star. Like, yeah, it's uh, really low uh, out of uh, five stars or whatever. Uh, I would have gave it, a, you know, a two. Uh, so it was really low. Anything over four is good. Okay. Um, now it's a hell of a lot better. Okay. Um, it's uh, not quite a five star, I wouldn't say, um, but it's very close. I would give this. Um, four stars and maybe three quarter stars so almost uh, just a notch away from being a five star product but it is an approved product for me now uh, the formula is way different than it was before two two three years ago when I used it last and I just uh, I thought you know I wanted to throw it off a bridge I was like what is wrong with this shit it's supposed to be so good everybody talks about it but in, in, in standard compared to all the other stuff and compared to the 3M compared to the other things I used for headlights it was just so low on the totem pole so I think now they kind of knew that and the technology for uh, headlight restoration polishes grew and they kind of jumped on the wagon because you know they all they all um, you know analyze each other's products or whatever and they kind of learn from each other and then they start making better products because this product is selling so good and this product works so good and they're like why does it work so good and they it's easy to reverse engineer somebody if you have a lot of money you know what i'm saying you can have you know pay one scientist he'll tell you everything that's in there but what i notice is the cutting power is way up on this okay and from the last product uh, the last formula and the oil content is way way up on this uh, from the last product it's not as dry as it was before although uh, that is the accountability for the um, three and a quarter star instead of the full star is I still feel it needs to have a little bit more oil content um, with that being said this would be a great mix with uh, the chemical guys both of these together I haven't done it but I'm pretty sure with my knowledge and my experience that that would be a kick-ass if you formulated it correctly. Maybe a, a 2 to 1 ratio, or excuse me, um, uh, 2 thirds ratio uh, to 1 third ratio of chemical guy. Um, so yeah, it's an approved, I approve it now to use on headlights with this method. Works really good. Works really good. It's really, um, has a nice little abrasiveness to it. It has really good cutting power. So I do, I do approve it and you'll see the finished product. Um, as I saw you right there, I used the pink mask. I usually have black ones, but I ran out and I still had some leftover. My woman had some uh, leftover pink ones uh, in the garage, so I just started using those instead of buying a new one. So um, sometimes I use just a regular N95 mask because the particles of the sanding will not go through those. But as you, as I'm showing you, the heavy duty mask I use for the Meguiar's, okay, any kind of spray or even even the touch sealant, it stinks so bad you need to have a respirator on uh, because you, when you're breathing that and you're smelling that and you're tasting that, that means it's going in your body. That means it's going in your lungs as well. Uh, it's very dangerous. Um, on the volume, I do these headlights. Even if you just do one headlight, man, you need a respirator, um, f you know, for this step, okay, uh, you know, and I've tried to hint towards that before. Um, um, but, you know, see all this stuff right here? It bounces back about two feet, and you're definitely going to be within the two-feet range of spraying this shit. 
Um, you do not want to inhale this. I have a respirator with that um, 6001 3M cartridge, the black cartridge, which is for vapor. Um, and I also have the extra cartridge that goes on top to kind of boost um, boost the filtration system of any kind of vapor. So I have extra shit on top of mine because I know how deadly this stuff is. And that's not just this product. That's any kind of spray product of, of this type. Uh, any kind of headlight clear coat, okay? Paint in general, but these uh, clear coats are even more deadlier than the paint, all right? So you want to use that at all costs, okay? Uh, so that's just a form of warning. I've done it before, and I'm just letting you guys know now. It'll ruin your day if you breathe this shit in, and it can ruin your week, and it can ruin your life, <laughs> okay, if you continue to breathe it in. So don't do it. Uh, that's the Headlight Restoration Pro saying uh, safety warning. Uh, but uh, look at this here. Beautiful headlight now. Look at that. Perfect. This headlight wasn't this beautiful when it rolled off the lot. Look at this. Look at that reflection. Look at that clearness. If it's this clear and this beautiful, that light's going to come out that way. Look at this. I'm about two inches away from this uh, surface of the headlight. All right. And then and this is about 80 percent dry. But when it's 100 percent dry, two weeks from now, it's going to look like this. Five months from now, it's going to look like this. A year from now, it's going to look like this if taken care of. OK, um, you know, and even further and further and further if taken care of. And if you use aftercare and all that shit, you know, my headlights on my car with the same method lasted four years and a half for almost four and a half years. But anyways. This is my car, all right, and this is uh, the vehicle I was just working on. I just finished wrapping up about to tell the customer I'm done. It's getting dark, but you see how I have the lights out there? Uh, pimp shit. Light Restoration Pro. Perfect. My grandpa asked me one time, if I care whether I live or die. Yeah, I do. See, now it's too late. No, you're not fucked up, Tom. Ah. No, it does. <laughs> no, you're not fucked up.